Hello! In this video, I'm going to explain the ideas behind the garden stack graph. Almost all other garden functionality is built on top of these ideas, so once you understand them, you'll understand garden. This video will be fairly high level, but in follow-up videos, we'll dig deeper and see how garden concepts map to these ideas and build on them to create a complete garden project. But now we're going to start by looking at a simple project and discuss some of the challenges of developing and testing it. In this diagram, you see the components of a simple three-tier web application with a database, an API server, and a web server. To the left of it, you see four actions. Garden is built on the simple idea that all software stacks can be described in terms of these actions. That is, in terms of how the components of the stack are built, deployed, tested, alongside tasks that need to run, as well as the dependencies between these actions across components. For our web application, this could mean that the database has a deploy action and a task preceding it. Our API and web service can be built, deployed, and tested. When you use Garden, instead of writing scripts, you describe each component of your system with respect to the four actions we mentioned above, and let Garden do the heavy lifting. Garden processes these descriptions and maps your system into a graph, like this. There are some key benefits to this. We can, for example, do work in parallel. In this example, a full execution is twice as fast. For more complex systems, it can be a lot more. And I say full execution because thanks to the graph structure, we rarely need that. Garden caches the results of every node in the graph. If the test is flaky and we need to rerun it, only the test gets rerun. If we change the code in, say, the web service, Garden will know to rebuild and redeploy the web service before running the test, but ignore other nodes. More generally, Garden will know to always execute the minimal subgraph. It also gives us granular control. You can run Garden build to build the entire stack. You can also run, say, Garden deploy API, which will only build and deploy the API. Yet another benefit is that it's portable across your entire software delivery cycle. Garden can execute the graph in any environment. Developers can run Garden from their laptops and it can be run from CI and CD pipelines. And you can easily add components to your stack without introducing more complexity to your workflows. These are just a few examples of the benefits of having a tool that can reason about your entire stack across environments. Now, I said that one of the core ideas behind Garden is that any part of a software system can be described in terms of how it's built, deployed, tested, and its tasks. The other core idea is that it should be pluggable. Let's take a look at the database service. We have a box for deploying it. But what does that actually mean? Well, with Garden, you can decide. Let's imagine this is a container workload that runs on Kubernetes in development. In that case, you tell Garden to use the Kubernetes plugin. If we decide to use a managed database in production, which we probably should, we can tell Garden to use the Terraform plugin for this component in that environment. Apart from that, the graph doesn't really change, and your commands work the way they did before. This is what we mean by a pluggable stack graph, and it's the core on top of which Garden is built. To summarize, by thinking about our systems in terms of how individual components are built, tested, deployed, and their tasks, plus the dependencies between these actions, we can have tools that can perform arbitrarily complex operations in a single command without us having to worry about how it all fits together. And, by making these actions pluggable, we have endless flexibility. Now, this was the theory part, and in follow-up videos, we'll put it to practice. Thanks for watching.